This is Ryan from GameRoomSolutions.com and today I'm excited to announce our Rev3 Virtual Pinball Cabinet. In this video we'll walk through cabinet assembly as well as addressable LED and SSF hardware installs. Subscribe to the channel to see our software configuration videos on both of those plus our new apron screen integration. The new Rev3 of the cabinet features removable plex for easy access to the top of the cabinet without any disassembly. LED light channels with tinted plex, LED speaker supports, grill style speaker panel, updated lockdown bar that can be blank, blank with the fire button, one player, two players, or the new 14 by nine apron screen with or without a fire button. There are tons of cut options for the front of the cabinet along with the DMD, including no cut, 15.6, a 14 by nine or a real DMD. In addition, we now have an artwork blade option to take your cabinet to the next level. The playfield supports a 43 inch TV and the back box of 32 inch. We've also added a new topper option with the 14.9 screen. Shipment is typically within two business days of you finalizing your artwork with our design team. Send us a thought or samples of what you want and our designers will send you a full comp prior to printing. This is the most customizable unit on the market. Free shipping within the continental US or discounted international shipping. Check out the description for a video marker guide if you wanna skip around and make sure and visit gameroomsolutions.com. Now let's walk through how to build our Rev3 virtual pinball cabinet. Okay, so start by laying the right side down. I went ahead and put in the uh, flipper nudge buttons there. Put all of the cam locks in as they go around. You won't put your TV in yet because we're going to have to adjust how high based on the you know based on the TV you have of, of where you want that to set. Um, it's already going to come with the graphics installed. If you get the uh, art blades here, that'll come installed. Um, the uh, T molding will all come installed, so you can see just how great those graphics look. This is going to be awesome. This slot, this top slot's for uh, your plex, your playfield plex. If you get the cuts for the um, LED lights. You'll have this additional one here and I'm going to go ahead and put those in and show you how that's done. Okay, so I just, I basically centered it, which will be just perfect, but you can see there that's stuck down in that deeper channel and now the plex is just going to go on top and it fits in there. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so you guys can see how good that looks. Um, so there's room on each end for the, for it to come out. You can see the little screw, but that's going to be under the uh, apron that I'm going to put in. There's one little small black screw right there and one at the top, but this is going to be behind this, so you won't even see that. That's flush now, and you can see the light down in there, and again, it's going to shine through, but from a distance when you're playing it, it's, it's perfect. Real quick, on this new version, you can take the uh, monitor out from the top. You can also take the plex out from the top without taking the unit apart, uh, so there's a lot of room there, but if you're going to clean the plex, do not clean it with water. It'll look clean for a second, and then it'll get all cloudy. I suggest just getting some clear plastic cleaner. I got this on Amazon. It's like five bucks and it'll last you for 800 years if you need it for anything for plastic. It's like a foam, but I suggest doing that to clean the Plex. Of course, the Plex isn't going to come uh, raw like that. It's going to have paper on both sides. So you peel the paper off. That'll protect it in shipping. So you peel the paper off. And I suggest you some kind of cleaner, clean rag and clean all your Plex. Okay, so real quick, this is the back of the play field here. This is going to be the board you know, the blackboard that'll sit right there at the back of the play field behind your TV. Um, if you get the light cuts, it's gonna look like this. So that way all of your cables can go through. Um, I'll have links or we'll have a kit uh, that comes with the lights or at least link to them to where you can get them. The ones that are, you know, will fit perfect in here. Of course, with the lights, it's gonna come with the blackout right there. It'll go on that. These, I, have pre I already have wired. So you can see where the wires are gonna go through here um, out the back so it can sit flush and sit down in there and then the plex going over the top but uh, this is not sticky like those are so all I'm going to do is just probably just put a little bit of glue right here just so I can go ahead and uh, glue those in uh, if you get the the blades this will come with artwork right here if you don't have these cuts um, so it'll it'll complete out your cabinet if you don't have the blade artwork or the inside artwork this is just black which looks fine too so i'm going to go ahead and install those real quick you're going to take a cat 5 cable just your or cat 6 you're going to cut one end off this is again it's going to plug into a board which i'll explain later but you'll cut one end off and that end you're going to use the um orange to the green on the end so you can see the DN right there. And then the orange white into the white. And that's how that's going to wire. So you can just 
wire those together and then you can see here this red don't worry about that that's for power which I'll talk about more later but it's more about this uh, Ethernet cable so I'm gonna go ahead put a little bit of uh, glue down here install those just real quick I hung that off the table so my cables could go through and you can see how it's, it just fits perfect um, this actually would hold if I did that and then I just put the uh, you know put the plex on and screwed it down I don't think it would move at all I'm gonna go ahead and just take a little bit of this glue spray pick up these ends and just barely spray a little bit just so they kind of don't shuffle around when I'm moving the board and that kind of thing I don't think you have to do it but I'm gonna do it just so it's a little more permanent but again I'm not gonna do too much okay so I have my lights in there uh, put the four little black screws in two on each side you can't even see that and you can see how awesome that looks uh, so it blacks it out. So it's going to go on the two cams that are right here. I went ahead and tightened those. You can see how that, since this is flush, uh, you're all good there. And then the, the graphics will flow right into that back. You don't have to worry about these because your TV is going to come uh, and block those out because you'll want your TV as close to, you know, right about there. So it should be perfect. Um, and then you can see again my cables coming through. All right, so let's start putting the cabinet together. Okay, so we got this top back support board you can see here. This is where uh, some port, support brackets are going to come in to put legs on it. Uh, but for right now, it's just these two cams. As they went down, I just locked those in. So the cams will be on the inside back of the cabinet. And this divot here will be facing out of the back of the cabinet. Okay, so we got the uh, bottom back here. You can see again, the notch goes towards the back. It's just a uh, cam locked in there. Uh, I went ahead and wired a switch socket in here. You can get these from us. There's a hole already for it. Whether you use it or not, you can just run a cable through there. It's just cleaner if you do it this way. Uh, so you can see there. I'll, I'll end up double siding taping this somewhere. This board is the only non-removable board on the bottom. There's two other boards, which I'll show you, that can actually come in and then come out if you need them to. Um, so there's a lot of workroom access. This is where you typically would want to mount your motherboard or put your computer if you're not just sitting it below the unit. Um, so that's up to you, but that way you'll have easy access from the back to your computer and all of that stuff. I typically will put this on the other side right there on the uh, left side. So you can see there bottom back, let's keep going. Okay, so a couple things about uh, mounting your Playfield TV or monitor. Again, this is 43 inch, uh, this is a 4K. But essentially what I've done, you don't need all four screws. You could just do two if you needed to because uh, these TVs aren't any heavy and it's also laying down like that. Uh, but I have these loose right now and I was holding this with both uh, both hands, right? And what I did is I was adjusting it to where it was over the cams that I needed and backing it up and moving it forward so I could figure out which cams I want to actually put on it. So you can see here, that's going to be perfect. The other thing, I'll, I'll, or I guess a couple more things is a lot of TVs, if you screw in both of them real tight, sometimes they're made to where maybe the top will lean a little bit of one way or another. So you might need to shim something in there just to make sure your play field's uh, flat. I've seen some guys just be on a different cam uh, on one side if they need to, uh, but I just put a little bit of shim in here so I can make sure that my monitor's level. The other thing is, is, is you can see how this is made to break away. So you can reach down in there and you can actually pull the monitor up and take it out completely and then place it back down and put it back on your cams uh, and then come underneath and lock the cams in. It won't go anywhere. You can really just set it there, uh, but I'd lock it in in case you want to move your pinball or something and you forget. So uh, I know where that's at. So I'm gonna go in the two, the next to the bottom for both of those. Uh, I'm not gonna mount my TV yet. I don't think I'm just gonna get the cams in, but I just wanted to show you how to do the placement. I will probably go ahead and tighten these down now since I know I want my play field back about as far as it could go. Um, I guess I need to make, yeah, I'm not covering up my, uh, make sure you're not covering up your um, LEDs if you have those there. But also in the front, I'll, I might have to adjust it a little more once I put the apron on. But this is close enough because, again, I can always get under the cabinet, loosen it, and adjust it exactly how it needs to after it's all put together. Okay, so i got my cams in here uh, to the height we just talked about. My cams are in here, and again, these boards are removable, so I'll put those in after the cabinet's uh, assembled and up. So I went ahead and put in the front board here. There is a ton of different cut options uh, for, for both the front here and for the lockdown bar. So I'll talk about the lockdown bar in a minute, but you can see here, I went ahead and pre-wired. I have this pre-wired how I want it. Uh, I, I went ahead and put a plunger in mine. Uh, I added the USB extender here so that way I could plug in USB if I needed to and a coin door that will light up 
Uh, you can see here, that's gonna be the light for the coin door. The coin door will work as well. All I have to do is splice in the, um, all I'll have to do is splice, if you get, yeah, you guys can see that, is splice that into my coin button if I wanted it to work. Uh, let me just show you how cool that's gonna look. Yeah, so that's the front there. Uh, let's talk about the lockdown bar next. Okay, so I went ahead and put in the small little Plex support. Uh, so you can see this is gonna face towards the play field. It has a lip there. This rotates so that way the Plex can slide down and then you can take it out. And then of course you can put it back in by putting it on the side, uh, fitting it in, and then you'll you'll lock this back up and that'll lock it into place. Um, so I went ahead and put that in. Again, that's just one cam so that way it allows it to move here. Uh, so we'll do the lockdown now. Okay, so obviously the lockdown bar is gonna come right here. We have it designed to where it'll open up like this. So you can open it up like this, turn this, pull the Plex out if you need to, lock the Plex back in. Also work on all your wires here. Um, if you have a coin door, it's nice too because you can open it up and get to some stuff. But you can get to all of this whenever the cabinet's completely assembled. You can come down in here and mess with wires or change things or have easy access because this does uh, this is adjustable. So with the lockdown bar, there's a lot of options. You can get no cuts. You can get a single fire button cut. You can get a one player with six button cut, a two player with six buttons each cut. And then this is the new cut uh, with the apron here. Uh, this is a 14 by nine screen. And also I went ahead and put the fire button on it as well. So this configuration is available. This is just an HDMI. So uh, between, we have a topper option. We have this apron option. Uh, you'll have your, your um, you know, two TVs for your back glass, your play field, maybe another one for your uh, DMD if you're doing a three screen. There's just so many options with this cabinet that you can uh, select on, you know, whatever cut you want from the front to the lockdown. Um, so it really is customizable. So I'm going to go ahead and put this into place. Uh, again, it's just HDMI input and um, I'm going to, I'm going to hook up this fire button as well. So uh, I'll do that now. Okay, so got the lockdown in. Um, I went ahead and put the TV back in and locked in the two cams right there. So now this is nice and stable. Uh, again, it will come out and that can come up. I also put a couple of these exciters in. There'll be one here for the left that's by the buttons. That's part of the reason why I put the TV in, just so I know where I wanted to place this. One towards the back, so I am gonna do 7.1 surround sound. So it kind of, you can hear the ball bouncing around the table and all that kind of stuff, which I'll show a little bit more later. But I went ahead and uh, put those in now. So I have one for the front, one for there. So you'll have uh, the two in the speaker, you know, the two main speakers, and then you'll have these four speakers. And I'm gonna go ahead and mount a sub too. I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, so real quick here on the bottom, I just went ahead and mounted this little, this little sub. Um, I'm not going to use that fan hole, so I half covered that up because I wanted it right here close to the edge in the center of the cabinet. Okay, so now I'm going to put on the leg supports. Um, you can see here, you'll want the divots facing um, on the outside of the cabinet because you can see how that lines up there so the bolts can come through for the legs. Um, there's just two cams in each of these. You'll push them in and tighten them there on, on both sides. There'll be a little bit of an overhang here. This is where a quarter inch board's gonna come for the back to screw in. If for some reason this board doesn't go under there easily, uh, because this is really tight, it's, it's designed really tight, just loosen those two cams so that way this board can come up to where that one can go into place. So you can see like right here, all I'm out to do is loosen these two cams. That board will come up, this will go into place and then tighten it all down. All right, so I went ahead and prepped the uh, the left side here. So exactly like I did the right. So you can see I have the uh, LED in the channel. I have the cam locks for the monitor in the spot I need it. All the other cams in, uh, these little exciter speakers here. So that's all ready to go. Uh, one thing I'll say is be a little bit more careful than I am. I mean, this is fine because I set it straight down, but just always make sure that you have something to protect to protect your graphics so that way you don't accidentally scratch them. They're laminated and they're super durable. It's just better to be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over, line it up, put it on and lock it down. And the, uh, the play field as far as the cabinet's pretty much done and it's wired um, except for the lights and some of the other stuff which we'll go into. I do wanna talk about, there is a button um, 
a buttonhole for a power button right here if you want. So all I did was run a longer cable and then this will just go on the jumpers on my motherboard. So that way if I want to turn everything on, I can just push this button to do it. There is a video, it's an older video on the website that shows how to do that um, if you want to, but you can add a button here and then, uh, and then that way you can just reach on the side of the unit and pop it and turn everything on. Okay, so got the left side on, got everything locked down, went ahead and uh, wired up my buttons uh, that are on that side. So now I'm gonna go ahead and um, just get my wires and stuff cleaned up and then we'll um, put the legs on. Just real quick, I wanted to go ahead and set it up before I put the legs on it just to take a look. I put the plex in from the top um, just to kind of look at everything before I get the legs. So you can see here, again, this this will pull up. That'll, to pull out the plex, I can bend, you know, this will pull back and I can pull the plex down and pull it out uh, or put it back in place and snap that up how it needs to be. Um, the lockdown bar will lock in so you can see how awesome that looks and going to look. The other thing is, I don't know if you guys can see this, but my monitor, see how it's not level? And that's what I was talking about. Some some TVs are monitors, the top is the bottom, and I have this screwed in on the top and the bottom, so I'm going to have to shim this, this side up on the monitor underneath just a little bit to make sure that that's flush. Uh, but man, these my camera might not get it, but how awesome those uh, art blades look, and you guys are getting some glare from the ceiling. But anyways, I didn't clean the plex or anything. I just put it in there. Just want to take a quick look. Everything's coming together awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and put the legs on. Okay, so these cabinets fit uh, standard Williams and Bally legs with these style brackets. So obviously these brackets, I wouldn't worry about screwing it in. Those are just going to go on the underside. You'll line them up with the holes, uh, put the leg on, put the bolts through. The one thing I'll say is when you do this, you want them tight, but don't over tighten them. The other thing too is if you have graphics, again, these are laminators, so they're real durable, but don't like push that direction. You know what I'm saying? You might come this way like that just to make sure that you're not like pushing up against it and then starting to tighten it. So just like that right there, I'll put the bracket on the other side. I'll go ahead and put all four legs on so I can stand this up. Again, you want it tight, but don't over tighten it. This is just wood and wood. If you tighten it and tighten it and tighten it and this in it, you know, you can, you can mess stuff up. So don't do that. Just put it on there, get it tight. Don't manhandle it too bad and uh, you'll be good to go. Okay, real quick, just wanted to show I have the uh, legs on so you can see right there the brackets. Normally you can set it up now because again you have access from the top, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all of my lights and everything wired up so that way I can save my back since this is up on a table um, instead of having to crawl around. So I'll do that now and explain what I'm doing. All right, so let's just talk through the lights real quick. So essentially I have three matrix um, in the back and then the two play fields and then those will go into the speakers. And again, the, the unit's gonna see it as one long strip. So I have a Cat5 or Cat6 cable. I've cut the end off. I'm gonna run that into the D end. On the, on, if you're staring at the table from the front on the far right one, so you can see here, the orange is going to the green, and the orange white is going to the white. Don't worry about this red cable right here. And don't worry about any of the other cat cables coming out right there. So that's the signal coming in. This is going to plug into the, the octo board or whatever. That's going to send the signal into here. And then in the middle of this matrix, you'll see there's a 5 volt and ground. That's where I'm going to wire to the power supply, which I'll talk about in a minute. So let's not worry about power. Let's just follow the, the data cable. So the cat 5 into here. Sorry. Cat5 in, into down here where it says D in. Then I'm going to run out. It's just going to snap into the middle one to where it's D in. It's going to come out. It's going to snap into the far right matrix where it says out to in. And then right here where it says out, that's where it's going to go into the left play field right there. So you can see that snapped in. That's going to control the lights going down the left play field here to here. And then I need to run a cable from here to the right so I can keep this, this circuit going. So all I did is I just bought some cable here. I have a couple ends. I'm going to run that cable long enough. Doesn't really matter about the colors as long as, you know, white's to white, green's to green, and so forth. So I'm going to put those on 
connect up here, left play field, go down to the right play field, connect that in. That's gonna come around and come out here. So you guys can see the connector here. And then I'll have to do another connector to go from here up into the speaker and the other speaker, which I'll talk about when we do the back box. Okay, so for the power, you think, well, I'll just run power and jumper it just the same way I did the data all the way around. If you do that, you're gonna get a weaker signal and it might not carry enough signal all the way around. So these are five volt lights. So it's best just to get a five volt power supply. Uh, calculate up your wattage and your amps. Uh, you know, whenever you buy the lights, you'll see what that is. This is what I got, which is a five volt 60 amp. And essentially what I did is on any of these, you can run the power. Sorry, let me zoom that in. You could run the power, you know, and try to daisy chain it together, it won't work. But in the middle, there's just a connector for power. In the middle, there's a connector for power. In the middle, there's a connector for power. So all I did was run cables from that, red and black. And so every light strip is gonna connect directly to this, as opposed to just connecting one of it to it and try to daisy chain it together. So the way that this works here, you have a normal, sorry, a normal power cable, like a computer power cable, cut it off. Black will go into the L, white will go into the N, green will go into the ground. And then you can see I have three plus and three minus. So I'll run all of the red into these pluses, the, the black into these minuses. So screw this up. You can stick multiple cables in here because I'll have more than three. So, you know, you'll just start sticking those underneath and sticking underneath and you can put, you know, like you could do like two, 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 put those in, tighten those down on the plus and the minus. This right here, you could put a voltmeter in there on the positive and negative and just read it and you can adjust this to give it a little more, a little less to get it right at five if you want to, um, but you'll put all the lights in here. So that way, this is gonna send power directly to each light strip individually. Again, instead of just plugging one strip into a five volt and trying to carry that signal all the way through, it's important it's five volt and not 12 volt or you'll fry everything and have to have to redo all of this. So I have my data. I'm gonna splice my one cable we talked about going from the play field left to the play field right. I'm gonna run all the power. I'm just gonna go ahead and double side tape that right there so it's out of the way uh, where all my cables are. I've already ran all these. There wasn't really any soldering. It was more just about kind of electrical tape. I just went ahead and did these and did a little heat on it so it uh, shrunk it together or whatever. But um, so that's it. You don't get overwhelmed because essentially all these cables hanging here, they're just the power, positive and negative, to the three matrix and the two play fields. So I'm going to uh, uh, wire all that up now. All right, I went ahead and set the table up. And just to show you guys, so you can see there that uh, I ran the red and the black. And then I just I heavy duty double sided tape that right there. Okay, so let's start working on the back box. All right, so I went ahead and put the cams in. Uh, I'll put the cams in for the monitor in a minute. I'm gonna adjust that just like we did with the play field. Um, so I got those prepped. We'll build this uh, on the right side. All right, so I got the top end right there. You can see where the plex is gonna go. Uh, for the bottom, these boards can go either direction. So I would just go ahead and set it on there, make sure. You can see how everything lines up. This is gonna be where it bolts to the um, play field so you can just set it that way so you know which direction it's gonna go because uh, it could go either direction so I'll just put that on there just like that so I know it's right okay let's talk about the speaker and DMD panel so there's a lot of cuts uh, for the DMD you can get a 15.6 cut for that uh, a 14 by 9 monitor or an actual real DMD with the DMD 3 so you can pick however you want that cut um, the speakers, if you get the light channel cuts, it's going to come with these little braces that'll go in there. Um, and the reason why is I'm going to want, those are going to stick around. I'm going to stick that on the front. Um, and then the cables are going to run up through here. My speaker obviously is going to go on top. Um, again, with the cables coming out. And then on the front side will be the speaker grills. So I'm going to go ahead and install that now uh, so you guys can take a look. Okay, so I got the speaker installed, the light. I put black electrical tape around the end on both of them, uh, just so I would know whenever I'm connecting it up. But let's come around here and see how awesome that's gonna look right there. That's perfect, so I'll go ahead and um, screw the grill in 
uh, put the screen in, put the speaker wire on, and uh, install it in the back box. Okay, so I have the TV mounted. Uh, I'm using the 15.6. Speakers are mounted with cables coming off of them. Again, I'm going to run this uh, later as well as the cable to this, the HDMI. I'm going to run that later because it'll just run right down in there to the cabinet. You can see here, this is where the four bolts are that are going to bolt it to the play field. Uh, make sure, so you put all this in, again, just the monitor where it needs to be. And then you'll put the uh, bezel, the plastic in, the slots, and make sure, you know, you put the TV pretty close, as close as you can get it. Um, so you'll put that in first and then put work this other side, just put this other side on and tighten up the cam. So that's it for the back box. Tons of accessibility back here because this is a, there's just one big quarter inch panel that goes to cover the back whenever you're done working on anything. If you need into it, you just take it off and you have full access to everything. So uh, I'm going to go and put the back box on the play field. So I got the back box on. Um, it'll be offset a quarter inch right here. It's supposed to be because that back door is a quarter inch. It'll screw in and a back door here that'll screw in. As uh, so you can see the four holes, this will come with the bolts and the wing nuts. So you just put those through and tighten those on. This will line up because obviously you can put all your cables just straight through here without bringing them out of the back of the cabinet. And you guys have already seen this, but this thing looks awesome. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and raise the monitor up how it needs to be. So it's just above the cam on that side. You can see this side's perfect, but the other side's not. So I need to do that. I need to clean this up and put the Plex in here. Um, and then I'll just have my 7.1 sound to wire here. I'll have for, uh, for my card, I think I have two display ports and an HDMI. So I'll have that for each of the TVs, but the 7.1 finish wiring the little bit of lights. And, uh, that's how easy and quick the cabinet, the cabinet obviously goes together really easy and really quick. It's, it's, if you do all the prep work ahead of time, which I highly suggest you do, because then by the time you kind of set it up like this, you're pretty close to having a working machine. Real quick too, when I was putting the uh, back box TV in, of course I adjusted it how it needed to be this direction, so it's right up next to the Plex. But you can see I have a gap. So once you set it up, it's no big deal, right? You'll just you'll just loosen, and you can always just use two of these. You don't have to use four. These aren't even tight. So all I'm gonna do is just adjust that to where it's even and how it needs to be, and then tighten those down as well. Okay, I'm gonna wire everything out here in the tower so you guys can easily see it. And honestly, I'll probably just leave my tower below the unit in the back. It's not like, at least in my setup where I'm gonna put this, you won't see it anyhow. And it just makes it easier to get to the computer instead of having to pull the pinball machine away from the wall or whatever. But uh, so again, for the sound. So I have two exciters up in the front, two in the back, a subwoofer here, and my two main speakers there. So on, um, you need a, a, a motherboard that has the 7.1 output. And essentially what I'm going to do is this SS out. I'm going to run that to my front exciters. The CS out is going to run to my subwoofer. The RS out is going to run to my rear exciters. And this main out right here, the main plug, I just unplugged it so you guys could see it. But the main plug right here is going to run into my, um, my standard speakers in my back box. So essentially each one of these 3.5 millimeter have a 3.5 on each side. I'll have... Four different amps. I have three amps, you know, one for my main, one for my front, and I label these so if I have to get it, or one for my rear, so if I have to get in here, and one for the front, right? So you'll have, you know, you hook up your two speakers there with the red and the black, and then I'll plug into the MP3 plug right there uh, from there. And then I can adjust the volume on each of these how I want. Um, this is the subwoofer one that I have here that'll run directly into the sub. So it's pretty simple. You just connect the uh, the speakers to each one of the amps for what the amps going to be used for. And then you'll uh, connect each one of those into here. And then I'll show you later how to set up the sound card. One thing I'll say is you might get some buzz, some interference in these. Um, I bought four of these things and I'll put a link to them in the description, but essentially it intercepts the signal and it pulls all the noise out. So there's no humming at all. So I have four of these. So I'm going to run each one of these, you know, into it uh, to make sure I don't have any hum. And then what you'll do is once you're playing a table, you'll tweak out all the sound, right? You'll, you'll say, well, I want the main speakers higher. I want the subwoofer lower. I want this and that. And you'll just adjust the volume knobs on these till you get it exactly how you want. And then within software, you can set it, set it up, you know, to turn up and turn down. Uh, you know, like if you have some kind of combo key in order to turn up, turn down. But what I do is I just buy a little, this is just USB. 
and it's just a, a volume control. I can push it for mute, unpush it for mute, and then turn it up and down. And I actually put that right on the side of my unit near my power button up there in the front left. So that way, when I turn this up and down, it turns the entire system up and down, but all of these still stay at the same levels that I want them. You know, if I want the ball sound rolling higher in the back whenever it's hitting the bumpers or whatever, I can adjust all this out and then do the main one here uh, with that. So that's, that's all there is. Again, I'll show some of the setup and the software to get this to work. But it's it's just you're gonna need four amps if you have this kind of setup, the little exciters. And again, I'll I'll put like an Amazon cart or something together, or we'll just sell this as a kit um, with everything you need on the site. So you can just check either one, and uh, it'll all be there. But that's how you hook up uh, for the SSF they call it, which is the uh, the surround sound. Okay, so just to show you, I have my four amps there. I went ahead and the those noise cancelers. I mounted those as well, just so they're out of the way, and then did some wire clean up there. And then I have my four plugs there and that wire cleaned up. So I'm trying to hold this up. There's a few cables there that are coming from the front that are part of the lights. I'm holding this up because I haven't cable management this. I'm just talking about the sound at the moment. So four amps uh, for the noise cancelers running into a motherboard that has the 7.1 sound. And then I have the four different amps plugged in right there. Uh, so that's it for sound. It's ready to go. So that's it. If you go step by step, your cabinet and hardware will all be installed at the same time. So basically ready to plug in your monitors and audio into the computer and play. Visit the website to learn more about our Rev3 virtual pinball cabinet and subscribe to the YouTube channel for our software configuration videos. Make sure and like the video and thanks.